Hello and welcome. My name is Nadine and you're watching Spaghetti Junction. This is my third video in my little mini series all about traveling as a single parent with a child. And today I want to talk a little bit about my booking process, how I book and how I can afford to go on holiday. People might assume that you have to be rich to go away and we try and do at least a couple of holidays every year. But I'm somebody who just likes to do everything on a budget. So when Betty was small, up until the age of almost five, I never really went anywhere with her. So my daily life usually is quite normal and frugal and this is how I can afford to go away when she was little. And I've been saying this in every video so far. I don't think there's a point to go far and spend a lot of money going abroad with little children because all they need is cuddles, food, drink, sleep, play. That's pretty much it. And they don't really care where they are as long as they feel they're in a safe environment. So I never wanted to spend a lot of money on traveling. But I was also very aware that later on when Betty is older, I would want to go on holiday. So I always saved up a little bit to make sure I can do that later on. I, I never really had a plan, like a, a savings plan, but I was working quite a lot and yeah whenever I had a bit of spare money I put it away so a lot of what I'm doing now comes from my savings and not spending crazy amounts on holidays when kids are little also for me applies to every other area in life when they're little they don't really understand the concept of money and they don't understand the concept of having anything expensive bought for them and believe you me I mean Betty is now nine the demands will come soon enough but I try to save on every every little thing that you don't really notice. So um, secondhand clothes and still nowadays we eat most of our meals at home. I cook meals, secondhand toys and things like that. There's a lot of free activities you can do with younger children. You know, Betty always just wanted to go to the playground. That was her favorite thing to do and that is free. So until she told me that she wants to do something else, uh, it's fine with me. We do any any free activity there is. Even being frugal, I don't like to take it to a crazy amount, to, you know, to an embarrassing amount. My daughter was always nicely dressed and she was always fed well, but I just always thought about ways of making things a little bit cheaper. When it comes to booking a holiday, I go about it in a very similar way. So first of all, I think the the big advantage of just traveling with a child and not with another adult is you will probably not go to fancy expensive restaurants because what do kids eat pizza pasta chips burgers hot dogs um yeah so this is one area where we always save money when we're away not voluntarily i quite like to try something a little bit different but i could not take betty to a restaurant where there's no kids meal and there's nothing she, if you have a child, you know what I'm talking about. I don't even need to continue. What I do when I look into booking a holiday, I always book everything individually and I always start with a flight. If I can get a cheap flight, then I know I will probably get a cheap accommodation as well. So I usually always, always stay in an Airbnb because it's um, the best value for money and it's very convenient. So if I want to go somewhere, I will have a quick look on Airbnb to get an idea what um, the accommodation costs. Because you might find a cheap flight to go somewhere and then wherever you want to stay might be ridiculously expensive there, especially with Airbnb. By the way, this um, video is in no way sponsored. I wish it was, but it's um, just all me giving you my own thoughts and own ideas. And I just happen to really like Airbnbs. Um, where was I now? especially small towns so places where there's more demand than supply tend to be more expensive funnily enough you can get a really cheap airbnb in paris but you might struggle to get um, an airbnb in a small town so um, just before i book the flights i will have a quick look whether the airbnbs are affordable and whether there is a choice there one good website to use is skyscanner for flights so you just type in your departure airport and your destination airport and it compares all the companies that offers flights and then from there you, you find the cheapest and then you can go directly onto their website some airlines will let you know 
when they release their flights. So this is how I booked the only holiday I can reveal for 2020 so far. And that's, um, we're going to Albufera in Portugal later in the year. So EasyJet, again, not sponsored. They will announce when they will release summer flights for the following year. So in middle of September 2019, they released the flights for summer 2020. And if you find out the date and you go online on the day in the morning, you will find the cheapest flights. So um, I think the flights are released at 6 a.m. in the morning, but I mean, I've only done this once, but it's not necessary to be up at six. If you, if you get up at eight or nine, and you book a flight then, it's considerably cheaper than booking after that. The prices will only go up from then. If you go online at eight or nine, that's enough time. Um, book in the morning on that day when the summer flights are released, it's considerably cheaper than waiting and leaving it later. Give yourself a little bit of an idea of where you want to go. Do a little bit of research beforehand. If you go on by 10 o'clock, they would have already gone up slowly by 10 pounds, 20 pounds. So that's how I managed to afford a fairly reasonable flight for the two of us to go to Portugal next summer. And I booked that in September on that day. There are Facebook group, holiday Facebook groups, where people, um, surprisingly, talk about holidays. So that's where I find out if you find a group like that, you will find out when flights are released. And I only know about this date for summer flights being released where everybody's on it. But you can probably find out more release dates from other airline companies where you can get cheap flights. Of course, if you can, you might want to take a train or drive or take a bus. That's always um, another option and possibly an even cheaper option. But it can be a little bit difficult to get to places. Flying quite often is the most sensible option. Always, always book the flight first because it's harder to get a flight than an accommodation. You might find a really nice and cheap accommodation, but you might not find a flight or flights might be crazy expensive. So make sure you get the flight first. So once I book the flight, I then look into the accommodation and my accommodation is usually always Airbnb. The main thing for me with an Airbnb traveling with a child is having our own bathroom for hygiene reasons, for it's not always nice sharing bathrooms with strangers. I don't really mind sharing a kitchen because we don't spend a lot of time in there. I mean, we don't spend a lot of time in a bathroom, but you know, I don't need to explain. So what I then do on the search engine thingy uh, is, so I click, this is my main box to click the um, private bathroom and Wi-Fi, of course. It depends where you go. You might not believe this, but some places don't have Wi-Fi. And then I set the price I want to pay and I want to I try and keep it as low as possible and I, I can see what I can get. So I would prefer to have our own space, not sharing with anyone, so not being in a room in a house, having our own little studio apartment. So I look at what I can get for the cheapest price I want to pay and if there's nothing there, I will either raise my price a little bit to see what um, private accommodation I can get or I will look what I can get for a cheap price staying with other people. And it's, it totally depends on where you are and where, what part of the world you're looking at. Um, I must say, from my experience, it's been totally fine staying at people's houses. People are usually friendly and helpful and maybe we're just lucky, but people tend to like my daughter and she's very chatty and she's you know quite sensible with, with strangers she knows how to be polite and not be annoying so we always had good experiences but i've explained this in another video how i got better used to being out and traveling and having a few different experiences abroad so every child is different not every child will be comfortable with strangers by the way i made a little playlist you can see that up here um, there's all my videos that I'm, where I'm talking about traveling with a child. So if you've enjoyed this video, click on that little info thing and all the other videos will come up and you can watch them later. We covered the flight and we covered the accommodation. So far from just doing these two things, I'd say you could already save yourself 40% in comparison to booking a package. Generally speaking, I'd say you can get an Airbnb half the price of a hotel room. The next thing is travel insurance. 
I think that's pretty important as well. To be honest, I haven't really had a lot of experience with travel insurance because 2018 we went to France and Spain and it was only a few days and I didn't have an insurance. This year I will get an insurance, but I haven't um, looked into that yet. So um, do a Google, go on comparison websites and find some information yourself. Just make sure you're getting an insurance really and cover yourself for illnesses and in case anybody who you're booking with goes bankrupt. Finance wise that is pretty much it. So the next thing would be having money for food but I already made a video on how we eat when we're away and it involves a lot of going to a supermarket and buying food and making our own food or eating out cheaply. So budget for food and then obviously you want to have a little bit of spending money. And you need money for getting around at the place where you are so either you know if you're traveling around by train or buses or you might want to rent a car yeah but this is basically it so um i think it is um it's doable it's not difficult just try and be a little bit frugal in your daily life put a little bit of money away um save up and then be be cheap when you're at home and be a little bit cheap when you go away and that way you'll be able to have some nice holidays. So this is it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, it would be really helpful if you subscribe and you like this video. Put your thoughts in the comment below. My channel is still quite new so I'm trying to grow it. There'll be more travel related stuff coming up in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.